The YMCA, known all over this nation for many years. The YMCA, known in Austin, Texas for some years. The YMCA, the subject of our Austin Faith Dialogue today. And to learn more about it, stay with us. Austin Faith Dialogue, at the crossroads of religion and life. A series highlighting the cultural and social interactions between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KXAN. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. Hello, I'm Richard Thompson behalf of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, welcoming you to this edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. And today we're really pleased to highlight the YMCA here in Austin. We are knowing that the, the Y has been nationwide for some time with its threefold purpose of spirit, mind, and body. We know that in Austin, that's taking a particularly new form in East Austin, as there is a community facility that has been opened there that we want to learn more about that as well as the other branches and the central Y as well. We have folks that are going to help us on this uh, beginning with, uh, uh, I want to welcome you Tony since you're going to be working with that East uh, Communities Branch of the YMCA. Thank you. Did I say that right? Yes. That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would also like to welcome uh, <clears throat> on my right here, Tom Parker of the North Branch YMCA. North Park. North Park, okay. And Jim Pacey of the Southwest Branch. Thank you. The y. Pleasure to be here. Now, between the three of you, we're going to learn so much about the Y that people are going to immediately run out and sign up for it if they don't belong to it already. That That's would great. be a great thing. And uh, let's start with this East Branch that just uh, has opened and had the dedication and the grand opening. What, what, uh, what, what's going to happen over there? How did that come about, the East Branch? Oh, God, look at me. I'm not sure if I can actually do this. You're, uh, you're, I tell you, you were, you're going to be office there, aren't you? Yes. Okay. And uh, this is, uh, where is it located? It's located um, <laughs> out by 183, between M off of 183 between MLK and Loyola. Okay. Yes. All right. So, um, we will find out more about uh, what the future is for that, but we need to do a little past tense here okay. in terms of uh, where you folks are. You're in North Park. North Park. And uh, where is that located? It's uh, Lam North uh, Lamar, uh, 9600 block of North Lamar up at the North Park Shopping Center. Okay. And uh, we've been there about two and a half years now, almost three years. Okay, so that's a relatively recent uh, So outlet. aside from East Communities, it's our most recent uh, operation. Okay. Did they call you to do that because you were so young? Is that why you're a big No, looks are deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, the, the, the opportunity was there for uh, the Y to position itself in that, that part of the community. Uh, mm -hmm. It was an underserved area. Uh, the center that we're in is a uh, old fitness center. Oh, really? A uh, racquetball center. And uh, the Y brings uh, so many more strengths to that kind of an operation in that uh, serving families and children, mm -hmm. uh, child care, those types of things, that uh, it was a logical fit. Okay. And so the Y has evolved uh, and continues to grow up there. We have about uh, 860 uh, units right now. Most of those are family units and doing very well. Okay, good size. Good size. Yeah. Now, on the southwest uh, side of town, where we're, are you uh, situated? Yeah, we're right off of 290 at Eau Claire, which is about a mile east of, of the Y in Oak Hill, the 290-71 split. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been there since October of 1991. And... Uh, we serve a variety of families and individuals there. We have over uh, 1,400 memberships there, probably serve 4,000 people. Wow. Now, what about the downtown? That's it. Are, you, are you situated downtown now before you've gone out to East Austin? Yes, I am. And uh, that's, that's by Town Lake. Right, first in Lamar. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems to me that that's, uh, that's the original one. Yes. And um, how did that come about? To, which, which one of you has been the longest? I guess well, you have. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, why, uh, that facility started in 1969, although the YMCA of Austin started in 1953. Uh -huh. It took several years before we found that location and started services there. And uh, that's been a, a great location for us, for, like I said, since 1969. Okay. 
Well, it is. It's uh, easy to find, and uh, out of that, though, they found they couldn't have everybody keep coming downtown. They had to be out in the neighborhoods. Especially as a, as a city grew and as uh, people grew, uh, moved further and further out of town, we had to find ways to extend our services to those people in their mm -hmm. communities. I see. How many branches all together? Right now we have four physical branches. We also have a child development branch that operates our after-school programs. Uh -huh. Where is that fourth one? Uh, we have uh, North Park, East Communities, Southwest, and Town Lake. And Town Lake, okay. Yeah. So that does cover it all. Yes. All right. Well, I tell you, one of the things that happened was back in 1996, uh, the KXAN produced a video, the forthcoming East uh, Community Center, and um, as well as the kind of the overall view. So let's take a look at that, and then we'll come back and, and talk about it. We are on a mission to expand our facilities. In 1991, the YMCA opened its second branch in Austin, the Southwest Family Branch YMCA. The Southwest Y offers a wide variety of youth programs, as well as indoor aquatics, fitness programs, and a workout facility. In 1993, we opened our first preschool adjacent to the Southwest YMCA. More than 90 children are enrolled in preschool programs here. The YMCA preschool features a one-acre play area and bright, cheerful, well-equipped learning centers and play areas. Also in 1993, we opened a swim center at our Town Lake YMCA, meeting a goal the Y had established years ago. The natatorium has been a huge success with more than 6,000 members and thousands of program participants taking advantage of this beautiful facility. For swim lessons, for fitness, and for exercise programs serving elderly and disabled people. So we continue on our mission to build YMCA facilities. We're adding to the Town Lake location with a 10,000 square foot expansion that will house a cardiovascular fitness center, meeting rooms, and YMCA corporate offices. But perhaps the biggest step this YMCA has ever taken is our plan to create the East Communities Branch YMCA, which is the main focus of our capital campaign. We call it the Campaign of Promise. With more than 120 acres of Northeast Austin land donated to the YMCA by IBM, we have the perfect location for a facility that will serve all of the communities of East Austin. The vision for the East Communities branch is a bold one. We envision offering all kinds of programs, from aquatics to health and fitness to youth sports and child care. And we envision the East Communities branch serving the needs of other community groups as a meeting place even perhaps to offer their programs under our roof, if that can benefit the community at large. Through our Campaign of Promise capital campaign, we'll seek the capital dollars to build the East Communities branch and perhaps other facilities such as a child development center. This campaign is underway, and we're very optimistic that the Austin community will respond wholeheartedly. At the oh White boy, that really looks like a wonderful facility, and uh, I'm sure that you enjoyed the uh, uh, grand opening yesterday and the dedication, and, uh, and it, it probably strengthens a whole why in, in the city, not just uh, in that particular community. Yes. I mean, it's been a while in the making, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really a design that's been in the process for e easily 10 years. Uh, there, there's always been a, per a perception that that was an underserved area of the community. I see. Um, and certainly a significant amount of investment by volunteers and, and the community has been made to, to ensure that this is facility and uh, meets the needs of the people who are there today and will be there for the next uh, millennia. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, maybe two millennia. I mean, why just limit it? <laughs> we, we certainly don't. We have some buildings that are older than, <laughs> than that. So. We do. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the, at, at Southwest, why? I mean, why are you interested in what's going on in, in, in Austin? We're all one big family. We're the YMCA of Austin. We all operate as if as a team that way, and, and that's why it's important because East Communities get served and is strengthened. We all are better for that, and we all have involvement and have participated in making sure that that's a success. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you got this threefold purpose. No matter what branch you are, mm -hmm. where in the United States, or where in the world, right, in the Y abroad as well? Yes. The YMCA is worldwide. Mm -hmm. We're in over 100 countries. Oh my goodness. I mean, uh, before the show, you were telling me something about it's growing in Russia? Russia. Yes. And China. Uh, China. Yeah. Mainland China. Why mm -hmm. would they want Ys over there? Well, they're, actually, the Ys were there long before the communists uh, uh, took over both of those countries. Um, 
they were well positioned, uh, serving communities throughout uh, throughout those both those nations. And uh, as that has evolved and changed, uh, uh, the needs of people still remain the same: uh, training for kids, uh, childcare development, all of those types of things. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, our, our Christian background really has uh, been. Uh, uh, very ecumenical. We're, we really try to reach out to a broad base of people um, uh, and allows us to, uh, to bridge uh, both faith communities as well as uh, uh, racial differences and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it's got the word Christian it doesn't mean it's limited to Absolutely. people of that faith tradition. We're certainly open for all and that's part of our mission statement. Uh -huh. and, uh, and the fact that it's men. I mean, is this... Is this it, is that right? Is this, is this just for men? It's not only for men, it's for women as well. Young girls, little girls, uh -huh. everyone's welcome to participate. I see. Yes. But, but there's a YWCA. Mm -hmm. don't, weren't they the one that was supposed to take care of the women? Well, they did uh, begin out of the YMCA uh, back in the 1950s, and they are a separate organization. But, yeah, they do do some services for women mm -hmm. uh, nationwide and certainly locally as well. Right. But you're not uh, attached uh, organizationally here at no. Austin, no. or even nationwide. No. What about the, uh, uh, the the Wise program? On you know, usually people see it and they think of swimming, or camps, or mm -hmm. something like that. But it starts out the purpose is spirit, mind, and body. You start out with the spirit. Mm -hmm. How? We do that through our character development values that we try to incorporate in all of our programs. That being faith, responsibility, respect, care, uh, and honesty. Those, mm -hmm. those things are woven into the fabric of every one of our programs and we, uh, we entrust the, the folks that we hire to make sure that those things come forward in, in the kids and the parents uh, through all our participants mm -hmm. that come through our doors, really. Mm -hmm. So faith doesn't just mean uh, a religious faith. It could mean... It could be faith in yourself, faith in a higher being, um, since we do work with all religions, in most religions there is a higher being, but if you do not believe that, we still say that you should have at least faith in yourself and ah. faith in others. Ah. All right. yes. well, I think it's important. Our, our faith is uh, through our daily living. I mean, everything that we do as we, uh, our facilities uh, espouse that, uh, we encourage the behaviors that are positive in those, in those regards, respect for one another. Uh, certainly honesty and, and caring for one another, those types of things. So we really try to live that mm -hmm. and, uh, and ask our, our membership to do so, too. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about how you're fulfilling the purpose locally. But our purpose at this point is to give everybody a chance to catch their breath with a break. So we are uh, soon to uh, uh, just bail out of here for just uh, a minute, but uh, come back and be prepared to talk more about the Y in Austin, Texas. Welcome back to Austin Faith Dialogue, where today we're in conversation with folks from the YMCA of Austin, from three different branches of that uh, organization in town. And uh, we welcome back uh, Tony and Jim and Tom. Um, Tony, let's talk about the relation to the churches in your particular part of the, this new uh, facility that is, uh, make sure I've got this name correctly. It is the East Communities Branch yes. of the YMCA. Yes. 
Well, uh, we are lucky enough to ha be in areas where the children are around the churches and we have run camps and uh, programs out of churches. Mm -hmm. um, as for yesterday, Father Bill Elliott, he was our invocator for our grand opening and he's mm -hmm. with Our Lady of Guadalupe Church and we were very thankful that he was able to help us out for our, our ceremonies. Okay. Yes. So you have, uh, you have camps that were there even before the facility opened? Yes, yes. And uh, now out in the southwest part of town, uh, Jim, what, what's, what's your relation to faith communities there? Yes, we, uh, we, we're involved with a, a number of churches there, uh, including uh, Bannockburn Baptist, who we have one of their ministers on our board, and then Bethany Lutheran Church, we operate uh, part of our youth basketball program out of there. Mm -hmm. So uh, you use their facility? Yes, sir, yeah. We, uh, we operate probably around 16 to 1,800 kids in our youth basketball program. We run out of facilities very wow. quickly. yeah. So. Okay, and then up north, uh, what, what about North Park? Well, a little bit different. Uh, we actually have churches, uh, startup churches, a number of them who utilize our facility. We have a, a Buddhist group who uses us, uh, a, a group who uses our pool for, for baptisms. And, um, no kidding. Baptist? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. <laughs> and, uh, and another startup church has just, uh, just started uh, around the first of the year. So, uh, you know, it, it's difficult for, for some startup facilities and churches to find a location, and, and the Y has been open to that and uh, seems to accommodate it very well. Is this mass baptism? <laughs> people kind of no, <laughs> it's uh, one at a time, but people uh, people come to the Lord in lots of different ways. And, wow. Uh, so they, uh, uh, but uh, just have to have a lifeguard on the deck. That's oh, about uh, it, but it worked well. works well. Okay, well, that's, that's something to visualize, isn't it? <laughs> um, all right, now, the thing is, as far as the, the, the relation to the faith community, and it's the interfaith communities. I mean, you said the Buddhists uh, right. were Absolutely. working with you there. And... Um, and I think that's, that's the one thing that we've noticed is that it's, the why is not just for men. Correct. And it's not just for Christians. Mm -hmm. What percentage of your participants are women? Uh, approximately 52%. Mm -hmm. Over and half. It's over, over half. Mm -hmm. And that'd be reflective of our staff as well. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, the age range from toddlers to the older folks. Yes. From six months on up, you name it. Prenatal. Yeah, prenatal in, in, in fact. Certainly. All right, now I want you to share with everyone what you're telling me before the show about the Y being the, the uh, largest uh, service uh, provider for daycare. Right, nationally we provide uh, school age, uh, preschool, and even infant care, uh, uh, and we are the largest provider across the country. Um, yeah, I mean, when you take all of the Ys, and there are better, better than 2,200 Ys across this nation. Uh -huh. um, so uh, it's a fairly significant uh, por uh, portion of the population that we serve in that way. The Y has 18 million members uh, nationally, uh, and so a lot of those are, are, are youth. In fact, the pr predominant, predominant number is um, under the age of 18. Uh -huh. So uh, we, we serve a lot of kids. Okay, now I'm amazed. I mean, you've got uh, you've got so many different kinds of child care facilities these days, and here's the why, nationwide. What about locally? Do you have quite a few? Locally, we're servicing 16 schools in five different school districts for after-school programs, as well as full day care when the teachers are in service, but the children are out of school, as well as summer camps and the special camps at holiday and spring break. You have to have mm -hmm. a lot of employees to do all that. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We, the after school probably has 125 um, staff as well as the summer camps are needing right around 100 staff to run during the summertime. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's a lot to keep up with. Yes. <laughs> do you know all their names? Um, I try. I certainly try. <laughs> yes. And we're always looking for more staff. Yes, we are. Quality staff. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Is awesome. that right? It's a never-ending uh, uh, situation. Yeah. Well, I mean, can you can you keep compete with other uh, child care providers on on that? Or we have to, and we uh, we also you know the, the Y is a unique commodity. I mean, we we really pride ourselves on the kind of quality that we attract, and I think people enjoy working for us. I mean, they they, they have a good experience. We certainly put them in an environment that is really positive and creative for for them and for the children that mm -hmm. they serve. Well, it sounds like I'd send my kid to there if I had one. I mean, it's just. Or, or grandchild, or you know, and speaking of grand folks, you have programs for seniors. Absolutely, yeah. We like have what? A, we have a, 
our, our senior members that, that come for exercise and, and come for social activities as well, and, and they're a, a vibrant part of, of what we do. We, we enjoy having them, and they have a nice place to belong to and come to, and they're our most prized possessions because they, they, uh, they stay with us the longest. Surprisingly, so, I mean, you're talking about out as your Southwest Branch, Southwest City and wide. Town Lake. Yeah, yeah City wide. I, I have a confession to make. I mean, it, you don't usually make confessions on television, well, but I've, I'm ready to do it. I just joined <laughs> the Senior Y exercise class. That's great. And uh, I want you to know that I'm feeling better already. Well, we <laughs> hope so. Good. Yeah, we <laughs> hope so. <laughs> they do it slowly. See, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> but they're very, very methodical. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, you know, going back to the purpose, you know, uh, the, the fact that people see the, uh, see the, your facilities, they see the swimming pool, they see these exercise programs. Mm -hmm. But um, I have a feeling that a lot of what happens here you can't see in, in the Y's relationship to people. And I, I'm wondering what difference have you all seen the Y making to the individuals that you've worked with in, over the years? Well, you know, our, our facilities are tools. They're not, they're not and edifices are in and of themselves. We, we make things happen in them, but we don't start out oftentimes in, in facilities. We start out in, in the lives of people, whether it be through a church or through a school or whatever facilities that we can, we can beg, borrow, and steal often. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I was, I was sharing with somebody earlier that, uh, uh, for example, our camping experiences where we have children for us in, with, for the entire summer oftentimes, we can make a great deal of change in a child's life. Um, any of our kids come to us with burdens that, that you and I never grew up with. No. And uh, uh, some of these kids walk away from our experiences uh, stronger and better, and we hope that our character development, the activities, the exposures, the learning experiences we provide to them are, uh, are uh, something they'll carry with them all their lives. Now, when you say that uh, kids come with burdens that we couldn't imagine, sure. all right, do you have somebody in mind? You don't have to name a name, but can you think of an example of some, some child that had their life changed as a result? Well, we, I, mean, I can give you one, uh, one, one situation. We have uh, a family who was with us uh, over the holidays who uh, uh, was moved into town fairly recently. Uh, and uh, because of circumstances, the family broke apart shortly after moving down here. Uh, we were able to accommodate those children in our, summer, or pardon me, in our holiday camp mm -hmm. because mom needed a place for them to be while she was working trying to make ends meet. Uh, we do that because we have... Um, a fairly significant amount of financial assistance that we provide to the community. Uh, we raise that annually uh, and really help cover the financial cost of parents who can, who can do that. But that isn't, that isn't what happens in those kids' lives. What happens in those kids' lives are the staff they interact with, the character development uh, that, that's in, in imparted, and, right. and the experience of being around other kids. Yeah. Does any, anybody come to mind with either of you that uh, you know has made a difference? I know that uh, over the summer we had a, a child come to us uh, again on scholarship uh, through the state that uh, was in, in a very difficult spot, uh, uh, was basically abandoned a as a child and, and uh, had a wonderful experience, started to actually speak and, and understand some words and listen to direction and interact with kids for the first time in her life. So those kinds of things we can't necessarily measure to see how big of an impact we've had, but mm -hmm. we know we've had one because that person is, a, is, I think, changed forever because of that. And those are the types of experience Tom was talking about that, that we can impart. We don't know what goes on in the hearts and minds of each of these individuals we touch. We just hope that we make a difference for mm -hmm. that moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been fortunate enough to, that I've been long enough where I've seen children grow from kindergarten to fifth grade mm -hmm. to sixth grade. Oh, really? Yes, and when you see them and, the, and when they remember what they've done with you and in the why, and I think that's important for them to have good memories of their childhood, good experiences of what they've done with the why, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's how we're making an impact as well. So you can see it over a period of time. Yes. Yeah. I have to tell you, <clears throat> back to confession time, <laughs> that I, one of the reasons I became a minister was because of the YMCA. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I was at Oberlin College, <clears throat> and uh, the, the Y there on campus was uh, was the best organized effort to get students together, not just to go on a hayride sort of thing, <laughs> but to, to interact and to feel what it means to 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 mature mm -hmm. and to and to be, enter into community. It was wonderful, and uh, I remember a fellow named George Ball who was uh, he was the the 
he was kind of the the students they looked up to him as somebody that was down on their level if you can mix a sure. metaphor and so that's that's he went to Yale Divinity School and he talked to me about that and uh, he was a minister but he didn't uh, he wasn't you know he wasn't doing it in the preaching mode mm -hmm. and uh, I suspect that you you all have had influences in your own lives oh, like absolutely that. absolutely mm -hmm. And uh, so I, it seems to me there's a flexibility in the Y. It can work on campus. doesn't mm -hmm. have to have a facility like uh, you just opened. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's a set of relationships that somehow renews itself over a period of time. Yeah, I, think, I think we really adapt well to each community, and that's really how we're, how we're founded. I mean, uh, each community develops their own YMCA if that's what they want, and, and we, we adapt to that. We're, we are very flexible. Mm -hmm. But behind that, we have our, you know, our mission and our, our, our belief system that, that's really helped. I mean, it's always there, and it, it is, is changed with time, but not the fundamentals. I mean, the fundamentals of, of caring, respect for one another, those, yeah. those stay true. To and apart from any uh, uh, doctrinal differences that people have, they can all agree on the character development and that aspect of spirituality. Right, right. absolutely. One, one final thing, of course. You mentioned there are 18 million members of the Y around the nation, is in that the, right? In this country, right. All right, that means is you've got so many members that you don't need any more money. Mm. No, <laughs> because we're never done doing what we need to be doing. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, there's, uh, there's, there's more East communities yes. out there. Uh -huh. There are yes. communities outlying um, that we would like to continue to serve and, and grow. So uh -huh. we will always be aggressively moving towards, whether it's money or the ability to serve people in unique ways. Yeah, does anybody have a phone number that anybody could call? Uh, to say that we'd like to, you know, get more information about the Y? That'd be great if they'd call 322-9622. Mm -hmm. That's our metro offices. You know what? I forgot to get that on the monitor. Would you say it one more time? 322-9622. Mm -hmm. So if they call, now you won't be down there to talk to them. I mean, you're... I will be down there for a little while, and then they'll be able to reach me at the East Communities Branch. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, And people call in. And uh, do they have to join to take advantage of some of your services? No. We have a lot of non-members that participate in our programs and activities, so. Yeah. No. Well, I, I can attest that it's, it's a very uh, reasonable kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's cheaper than joining a country club. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you can get so many benefits for a reasonable cost. And, and, a, and a great cross-section of the community that yeah. you get to meet yeah. and talk to. right. Well, I also think that... Um, uh, we've got just a minute or so left. If you were to say to folks, uh, in fact, we've got less than a minute, uh, so don't say anything to folks. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. I just realized we're running out of time. I can really thank you for being here. Well, Tom thank Barker. you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us, Jim. Really do Bless you all. You. It's just a great work, and I uh, hope folks will enjoy this and benefit from it. In the meantime, peace be with you all. And I'm Richard Thompson for Austin Metropolitan Ministries.